What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today, we got a 15 F550. All right, I'm not gonna show too much of the truck here because they got a whole bunch of caddy wampus uh, written on the side of it. But you can see they got something, this is a crew cab. They got a little uh, treasure chest behind the cab and the bed. She's extra long. And today, we are going to check out why the malfunction indicator lamp is illuminated. All right, this thing's got that many miles on it, and they're also complaining that the vehicle is in idle only mode. All right, you guys have seen the uh, video on how to remove your vehicle from idle only mode uh, using the scan tool IDS. Uh, when I first ran the continuous, I'm sorry, the uh, key on engine off on demand self test. These were the DTCs that we got. Lost communication with the NOx sensor A. Invalid data received from the brake module. Don't know why this is here. Could have ran it out of fuel. Could have been here from improperly replacing fuel filters. But look at everything else. Everything is with before the NOx, uh, the NOx sensor. So we're going to go through the diagnostics needed to repair uh, these DTCs. Uh, whenever we get DTCs, you have to group them, not group them, but uh, go in order of priority, I guess. Um, I'm not really going to care about this 2200 knock sensor circuit. Wouldn't you be more concerned with the knock sensors? modules ability to communicate so obviously you're going to want to follow the communication code first and that is what we're going to do okay we've we scrolled all the way down through our pcd and there are some u codes here usually it sends us to the uh, workshop manual but uh, just a little brief overview this is what happens when that dtc sets so they're indicating to us that we could have some RFI or in fact a damaged NOx module. I find it kind of funny that there's no uh, wiring added to that possible causes. So we click on pinpoint test RD. Um, you can see they're going to tell you uh, this pinpoint test is intended to diag all of those components and those harness circuits. So I'm more concerned with this U code right here. Go down and hit all others RD5. Ask us here, are any DTCs present other than any of these other ones that we got? No. We're gonna go right to, where's my cursor? We're gonna go right down to the U29D. Right there. It's going to send us to RD7. Wants us to carry out a visual inspection. Uh, let's go underneath the vehicle and check it out. All right, we're up underneath the passenger side of the frame. We have our NOx module one. Uh, we got our sensor connector and then our uh, vehicle connector from, you know, the main uh, rear harness, the 14405 harness that runs along. Uh, the side here and loops over. Um, let's go to the back. On the newer trucks, we have two Knox modules. So we have Knox 1 2 sensor, bank 1, sensor 2. This only has one bank of exhaust on the chassis. But if you follow that Knox sensor, it goes to Knox 1 2 module. So uh, the one in question today is the Knox 1 module, which is forward of where we are, and we're going to check uh, the connections. We're not really worried about that. Let's go back to the front and check everything out here. I did pop this over up to check some stuff out, but for the most part, everything looked intact. This was in its twang, I popped that out. Visually, everything 
everything looks all right. So let's go back to the pinpoint test and see what the next step is in diagging this concern. Everything was, was good. They want us to check pin six to ground. Okay, keys on. All right, we're up underneath here. Disconnect that. And we're going to check pin six right here on the bottom left. So I've already gone ahead and hooked up our fancy power probe. And let's check our voltage. Okay. We got nothing. We got absolutely nothing. So when you click no, it wants us to repair the circuit. Let's see what circuit. Should be a blue with a brown. Blue with a brown. Let's see where that blue with the brown gets its power. Green diagram for our Knox 1 1 module. And if you can see, there's pin 6. And it's labeling that as V power. We're looking for a blue with brown. We've confirmed that down there. Uh, that is the connector we were just testing on. So let's go upstream to the next connector and see if we got power there. So we're looking for this kind of connector. That's what it looks like. And we are a cab chassis, so we're a narrow frame. Let's see where that puts us. So we're kind of almost in the middle, middle of the truck. Let's see if we can locate connector C110. Okay, so we're underneath again. Remember, it's the harness that runs to the back of the vehicle that hooks up all of our after treatment. There it is right there, hooking up to some EGTs. We got, uh, there it's running over there. Remember on our pickup, I had a, a chafe spot over there. Uh, oh, there it is. There's our connector right there. Check it out. Okay, so looking at it, uh, pin 13 is at the bottom. Let's see here. Oh, what is that? What is that? Oh, dun dun dun. I think we got an issue, boys. Another pinched chase spot right there. Shadows in the way. Look at that. All right, we have found a problem. I'm not saying that is our problem, but that definitely does not look conducive to long lasting harness life. So I have to make a decision whether or not I'm gonna to wanna to lift this heavy turd or fix this laying on my back. Well, actually I'm sitting up uh, underneath that uh, little fun, fun contraption they got behind the cab and the dump. So I can't really move that. If it was a dump, then I could just lift it up and that would be sweet. Okay, so let me uh, get Taryn in here and see if I can show you the problem spot. All right, check it out. I was able to get the whole harness down and around the drive shaft here. Like I said, I'm sitting up on my creep, on my creeper. Check it out right there. You can actually see the blue with the brown right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix these two wires and then we're gonna go through the self-test and verify, well, I wanna verify we got power back at that connector over there. Um, and then, if this is all connected correctly, I've never been in this scenario before, I don't know if that's the only reason why it's in D-rate mode, and then as soon as I fix it, it's gonna go away, or if I'm gonna have to go through the SCR drive cycle to remove the vehicle from D-rate, so... I guess we need to start fixing this. So let's get to it.
Okay, check it out. You guys saw me fix it up. I only had one wire. Looks like uh, we had some uh, green corrosion dust laying on top of that other twisted wire. So, needless to say, we got that fixed. I'm going to uh, reroute this in a better fashion than it was previously, and I'm gonna hook everything up. And then it's going to be retesting. All right, we're underneath. Here's our suspect connector again. Key is on. Let's check power. Look at that. Freaking A right, bud. Look at that. Battery voltage right there. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is hook these up. We're going to rerun our self-test. All right, we're back in the truck. Still says engine idled. Let's go ahead and we're going to clear all of our retrieved DTCs. Okay, our code's cleared. Now we are going to have to perform the drive cycle to exit the vehicle from idle only mode. So some of the PIDs that we're going to want to select here are all of our EGTs, our uh, reductant injector duty cycle, and our reductant tank pressure. So right now we have a limited time to get this out of the shop because we are going to need to keep the EGTs below 149 um, or we're going to have to cold soak it. So after we get it out of the shop, we're going to have to increase the RPM to 2000 and watch for narrow framed vehicles. We're watching the EGT 13 PID until it goes to 194. So let's get this turret out of the shop. All right, we're getting this thing out of the shop right now. What's our EGTs reading? Idle only message being displayed. EGTs 125, come on baby. Let me get out there faster. I think we'll be okay, it's gonna be hard. Okay, we're in park, and I'm increasing the idle until we get to 194 of EGT-13. So EGT-13, we're waiting for that 194. She's creeping. Going up slow. Okay, there's 194. Okay, our reductant pressure should be going up any second. Okay, perfect. Going up, 72 is what we want. Okay, so once it achieves that, I'm just going to let it sit here for like 10 seconds before we start driving. Just going to wait here. Wait, give it a sec. Let it stabilize. I'm going to mat it to the floor. We are going to drive at 5 miles an hour until we start to see a square wave pattern display on our injector duty cycle. So we're just going to keep doing this. Once I get to the one corner of the building outside is usually when it starts doing the square wave but we'll see within 90 seconds of driving i don't know if you can do this with any other scan tools i do not use any other scan tools why don't you guys let me know out there okay here comes our square wave pattern check it out okay we're going to continue to do this we're going to keep driving until that pattern stops you guys can check it out Okay, there it is. So I'm gonna face east here and sit straight. And uh, I'm just gonna increase idle until one four is 437 degrees or the message in the instrument cluster goes away. So let's take some time. Still got the message in the cluster. cleared sweet so 278 degrees it uh cleared so let's see if we're in idle only i don't think so all right you guys tell me what you think about that in the comment section below 
If anybody's ever had to do what I did, if you've got those codes and or lost communication with your Knox module, tell me what you guys think. Join the squad. Let me get some stickers out to you and uh, keep your eye out for some merch. Talk to you guys next Friday. Thanks for watching. See you later.